We have previously looked at planet formation and questioned what the mechanism might be for the formation of different types of planets, and asked why our solar system seems to be so different from all the other systems we have observed. Astronomers have recently discovered a nearby system of exoplanets with a very unusual makeup. Let's dive in. The system contains a very orderly set of planets, but they appear to have a disordered set of densities. Five of the six planets orbit the star in a rare rhythmic dance called a resonance chain. What is strange about the system is how mixed up the planet types are. If we examine our solar system, we see the rocky planets are the closest to our star, and the less dense gas giants are further out. It is believed that gas giants start much close to the star and migrate outwards and the rocky planets do the opposite. It is thought that given enough time, the system will shuffle the planets, making the most dense move inwards and the less dense ones outwards. Once this is reached, they will settle in a rhythm. It is thought that while these migrations take place, this will disrupt these rhythms and cause massive disruptions to the other planet rhythms, meaning it should not be possible to create a resonance chain until it settles down. The star at the center of this system is called TOI-178. It resides about 200 light years from Earth in the constellation of Sculpta. These planets were discovered using a combination of telescopes and satellites and using two different methods. The first method is looking at transits. Here the light from the star dips as exoplanets pass in front of it. The second method uses radial velocity. This looks at small changes in the redshift of the star caused by the planets pulling the star towards and away from us. From this, they discovered that the system contains six planets ranging from one the size of the Earth up to ones three times as big. The inner planets are also thought to be rocky super-Earths, and the outer four are thought to be gaseous mini-Neptunes. They also seem to be packed in much closer to the star than Earth is to the Sun, and they orbit at a much faster rate, the fastest being one of a few Earth days and the longest only a few months. When they started to examine the details of the orbits, they discovered something rather strange. The five outer planets are locked into a precise resonance chain. This means that they regularly align after the completion of an exact number of orbits. Starting from the star, the resonance chain is what they call 189643. Every three orbits of the outer planet, the next one in has completed four the next 6, then 9, and the one closer to the star, 18. The lead astronomer on the paper thinks that the orbits in the system are very well ordered, and that this tells us that the system has evolved quite gently since its birth. The problem is that this order does not apply to the density of the planets. You should expect to find the gas planets migrating further outwards over time. Here there is a planet which is as dense as Earth right next to a very fluffy planet with half the density of Neptune which is then followed by a planet with a density of Neptune. This is a problem for the model where the planets form from an accretion disk, as the interaction between the disk of the material and the planets should cause a sorting process during the formation, which should leave the larger gas planets further out and the rocky bodies close to the star. The resonance chain implies that this system has not changed in a long, long time meaning you cannot explain this by disturbances from outside the system, like the capture of one of the bodies or the disturbance by another star. The astronomers admit that this system is not what they are used to, how these planets became so ordered, but with this haphazard configuration is a complete mystery. This of course means that the mainstream idea of accretion to form planets, and these then sorting themselves out over time, cannot be correct. We have discussed the various planet formation models before, and this system certainly shows the problems that any model must overcome. Stability in the orbits. The system has a very long resonance chain which makes it very unusual. This means it has remained stable for a long time. Any model would therefore need to allow for either the formation of the planets of a variety of densities at different locations, and allow for a mechanic of keeping them at a specific orbit or it must allow for a mechanism that allows the orbits to be locked into place much, much quicker. The creation of rocky planets and gas planets in situ. 
The mainstream model uses gravity to condense the material into a disk surrounding the star and then into smaller lumps which will attract more material over time growing larger and larger. I have discussed the problems with this model before, so will not dwell on it here, but suffice it to say that it cannot explain the formation that we see here. Looking at the idea of planet ejection that I have covered recently, this could be one way to allow the variations in the density of the planets that we see. But the problem we face here is that the gas planets are much smaller than the gas giants in the solar system. In the Electric Universe model, stars could eject a large gas giant or fission into two bodies, one smaller than the other. Rocky bodies are thought to be ejected by gas giants. It is feasible that an intermediary step is possible from either. Another option is the capture of an existing body from elsewhere. In the Electric Universe model, it is thought that the gas giants in our solar system are actually captured brown dwarfs. The problem with this system here is that the gas planets are very small, meaning the brown dwarfs would also have to be very small and any capture would not result in the resonance chain that we observe. This still leaves the question of where the rocky planets in the system came from. If we look at the TRAPPIST-1 system, we see what are thought to be predominantly rocky bodies, with potentially one having an ice or extended atmosphere. So how would these bodies have formed or been captured? There are no significant gas giants for an ejection process to have occurred, creating the rocky bodies. So did the star eject them? Or is some other process involved? Did the star create them when it was not a star? Was it part of another system as a gas giant? And did it get ejected then and later become a star? The question then is at what point does something become a star? Are there limits to this in terms of size and composition? Assuming it was ejected from a star system, then as soon as it left the heliopause, it would be exposed to the stellar Birkeland current. Is this enough to fire it up? The spacing of the planets. This system and the TRAPPIST-1 system seem to be far more compressed and move at a much faster speed compared to our solar system. What determines where planets end up in their stable configuration? Why is it so much further apart in our solar system? Could the introduction of a large brown dwarf capture like Saturn cause the rearrangement of the orbits and force these to be much further apart? Is this system therefore more energetic afterwards, leading to larger orbits? Planet rotation and tidal lock. Related to this is the question of tidal lock. When we look at the TRAPPIST-1 system, it is suspected that most of these planets are tidally locked, meaning they orbit with the same face pointing towards the star. Yet when we look at our solar system, none of the planets are tidally locked. Yet all of the large moons in the outer solar system are. Is it possible that the position that the planets occupy are not simply a random placement? More likely the planets are connected to the central star in some manner. This connection may well also determine the rotation of the planets as well as its location. It may be that the planets can only be located at specific points due to this connection. When we look at the problem of tidal locking, the mainstream explanation for this is time. Every body is given a spin due to the accretion process. Given enough time, a system will become tidally locked. But maybe what we are seeing here presents the opposite view. Newer systems are born without this rotation. This is something that I've discussed before. This would imply that the moons of the outer solar system are relatively new and may well be an artifact of the capture process in the solar system. Venus presents a problem here as the concept is that it too was ejected during this capture process, yet it does have a rotation, albeit counter to all other planets. The more we discover about other worlds, the more questions this raises, and it is fair to say that at this stage no one model is able to explain everything that we see. There are many pieces to this puzzle, and many, many questions. Some pieces hold more promise than others, but each also has its own problems. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.